Hi everyone, welcome back with me Nathan. The AI-powered IDE WinServe has just released a huge update to their editor and in this video, I want to talk about these updates in more detail and also show you which ones are especially useful for your daily work. So about last week, the WinSurf team released an update to their AI-powered editor which they call the Wave Egg Upgrade. And this upgrade is so huge that they have to split it into 3 days to make it all more sensible. For the first day, the update is all about the teams and enterprise plans which will not be useful if you are a single developer building stuff. But if you have a team of developers working together, then this update will be very useful. First of all, Windsurf now has a GitHub app that can review pull requests and edit titles or descriptions while following the code review guidelines that you can provide. This pretty much helps teams to work faster by allowing Windsurf to assist both the author and the reviewer. For the author, Windsurf will be able to write an informative title and description based on the code changes that are being pushed. For the reviewer, Windsurf can review the pull request changes to ensure that the changes conform to the team's guidelines. The reviewer will see the changes suggested by Windsurf once the review is finished. What's more, Windsurf review is currently free for teams and enterprise users. As the app is still in beta tests, the developers are looking to understand how organizations use this feature so they can continue to improve it over time. Next, there is a small update to Windsurf Teams, which is the Google Drive integration. You can now add existing knowledge saved as Google Docs. If you want to do so, you can go to Windsurf settings on their website and then connect your Google Drive. Once connected, Cascade will automatically fetch knowledge from Google Drive when you ask for something related to your team in the editor. Next, there is the conversation sharing, which allows a member to share a particularly valuable and effective use case for their company. This conversation can only be accessed by people on the same team. After that, they also have an improved deploy feature so that now teams can directly deploy their apps to Netlify without having to go through WinServ server. This feature is actually pretty useful even for single developers, so I hope they consider to extend this feature soon. Finally, Windsurf has an upgraded analytics in the Teams dashboard to make it easier for teams who want actual proof that using Windsurf is beneficial. That will be all for day 1. Next, we're going to explore day 2 of the upgrade. Now, day 2 features are released for all plans, so for those who are hobbies and single developers, you will want to see this. Just like the first day, the second day released a bunch of interesting features. Two of them are custom workflows and file-based rules. Basically, custom workflows are a way to save prompts that you might want to run repeatedly. The prompt can be saved as a markdown file, and anytime you want to run the prompt, you simply type slash and then write the markdown file name. Let me show you an example. Here I have my WinServe editor open. First of all, you need to make sure that you are running the latest version. To check for an update in WinServe, press the command shift P or control shift P in Windows or Linux to open the common palette. Then search for WinServe update. Click on the check for updates menu and you can then update WinServe if you're not on the latest version. Now that you're on the latest version of Windsurf, click on the book icon on the top right corner of Cascade as shown here. Now you will see the customization window where you can see rules, workflows, and memories stored in Windsurf. We will explore rules after this. For now, click on the workflow tab and then click on the add workflow button over here. You will be asked to write the name of the workflow file. For example, I will name this as review code and an interface will appear where you can add the description and the content. Description is simply for describing the workflow, while the content is what Cascade will execute. I will add some description here, and for the content, just write, see if this code is following the best practice guide. Save the changes, and now the workflow is added to the workspace. And let me open the Explorer tab here, and let me enlarge it a bit, drag the other windows away. Here you can see the .winsurf folder, and the workflows folder inside it. To use this workflow, just go back to Cascade chat interface, then type a slash. Now here's the workflow that has been created. Select the workflow and then run it just like a regular chat session as usual. By the way, you can also ask Cascade for a workflow if you're not sure what to write. For example, here I will ask Cascade to create a workflow that will deploy a Next.js app to Netlify. Let Cascade run for a moment.
And here is the workflow created by Cascade. You can check on it and fix any mistake that might be written by Cascade. And if it's all good, you can run the workflow from Cascade as well. Uh, it seems the workflow doesn't appear. Uh, let me restart Windsurf here. Okay, now Windsurf is restarted, so let's try again. Alright, the workflow appears this time. So it seems you need to restart the Windsurf when the workflow is created using Cascade. Hopefully, they will fix this so Cascade can automatically use the workflow that was created by itself. Alright, just another heads up guys. I think you can also try clicking the refresh button over here after generating a workflow. I didn't see this button previously. Next, rules or instructions added to Windsurf that will be used to guide the behavior of Cascade. For example, you can provide the best practices to follow in your project as a rule. You can keep multiple rule files under the rules folder, and Cascade will look at all of those rules before executing a prompt. Let me show you an example of adding a rule. So back in Cascade, open the Customizations tab again, then in the Rules tab, you can select between adding rules globally for all Windsurf workspaces, or just for the one that's currently running. In this tutorial, I'm going to select just this workspace. For the name, I will say Next.js Best Practice, and you can select how to turn on this rule, whether manually by mentioning the rule, always active, let the AI decide, or triggered by specific file glob patterns. I will select always on for now, and then I will write some rules. For example, do not touch the node next folder as it was generated by Next.js. Also, don't touch the node modules folder. And that's basically how you set up rules. You can add any instructions you want. Let's create another rule and name this as CSS styling guide. Turn this rule always on again, and I will paste some rules here related to the project. And that's how you use rules in Windsurf. With always on rules, Cascade will always adhere to those rules whenever you send a request in the chat box. Next, you can now run multiple Cascade conversations, so when a task is running in one conversation, you can open a new chat window and run another task. This should help you work faster and more productive, so let me show you an example. Here I have a new chat window. I will say, explore this code base and explain it. Now, while it's running, open a new chat window with this plus icon, and then ask, let me know how to style this project. Now, there are two running conversations. You can switch between active conversations with this drop-down over here. There is our conversation, and when the reply is finished, there is an orange icon over here. You can switch back and forth as many times as you like. Next, we also have Cascade plugins. Uh, this update is basically a refreshed UI for Windsurf MCP configuration. In the previous interface, there is no way to search and save MCPs. You need to manually find the configuration for that MCP and apply it to Windsurf manually. But today, there is a plugin store to manage and discover MCPs. You can find and save any MCP tool you want to add to Windsurf and it will be added automatically. So let me show you again. Back in Cascade, click the blocks icon over here. And here is the MCP store. You can search for available MCPs and then click on that MCP to install it on Windsurf. Uh, let's close the Explorer tab. Here in the plugin details page, you can see the plugin information and click the install button here. Click save and that's it. You can also uninstall it from the same MCP store interface or search for a specific MCP. Now, MCP server integration is also improved so that you can check for MCP resources and render multi-model responses right inside Cascade. Here, you can see that the image is rendered in the chat and you can click on it. And the final day 3 of the Wave 8 upgrade is all about UX features and plugins update. First. Windsurf added three popular features requested in their JetBrains plugin, Memories, Rules, and MCP support. After that, they also added several UX changes to make it more comfortable when working in Windsurf. First, there's the Continue button that you can click when Cascade pauses for your feedback. This only appears after Cascade has been running a long process. Next, the model selector in Cascade was also redesigned, so now you can filter and sort by cost, provider, or Windsurf recommendations. 
When you select provider, the models will be sorted based on the model provider name. First, there is Windsurf, then OpenAI, then Anthropic, Google, XAI, and DeepSeek. When you sort by cost, the models will be sorted in premium, best value, and free categories. The recommendation sort will show the models that give the best result according to Windsurf. My favorite model is the Cascade Base model that has unlimited use even for free users. After that, there is the conversation history filter which allows you to filter conversation history only to the current workspace. For example, here are all my conversation history. Now if I click on the drop down here and then select current workspace, and all conversations that are not started in this workspace will be hidden. Now back to all conversations. If you click on a conversation that started in a different workspace, Cascade will also ask if you would like to open that workspace so that any file references and inline citations are still accurate. And lastly, the comment interface on Cascade is now clickable, so you can manually change the comment when Cascade suggests a wrong one. Let me show you a quick example. Here, I will ask Cascade to start a Next.js development server. Okay, it actually wants to run the right comment here, but suppose that this is a wrong comment, you can just click on it to edit. Now you can change the comment, and then click anywhere outside of the box to save it. Now, since the previous comment is correct, I will undo this change, and then click the accept button. So that's pretty much all the interesting updates included in Windsurf Web 8 upgrade. For more details, you can see the blog posts announcing these changes. I will leave them in the description below. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Windsurf Web 8 upgrade? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify tax topics so that you can master them easily. So make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting or useful. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, and all the other good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in other videos. Bye bye.